program is based on bubble sort, sorting algorithm. Sorting means arranging something either in ascending or descending order. Bubble sort is name of the sorting algorithm. There are many more algorithms, but bubble sort is the simplest of all. The program description is, you will first ask the user to enter the input elements into the array and later you will sort them in descending order and print it on screen. For this, you will require a nested for loop and one dimensional array. For example, if these are the values of input array, then your output will be in this manner. Let's understand first what is an array, how to initialize and declare an array. An array is continuous when any uh, element of the same data type is to be stored one after the other, then you store those elements in an array. For example, if you want to store numbers, six numbers next to each other in the memory location, then you declare an array of size six. So for declaring an array, you require three elements, the data type, name of the array, and the size. For storing numbers, I will call an array of integer type. This is the name of the array. And since I want to store six numbers, I'll reserve six spaces in memory. These are the values of the array. 2, 4, 10, 5, 15, and 3. They are called as array elements. To refer to the first element, I have to refer to this position or the index called 0. The second element will be stored at position 1. The third element of the array is stored at position 2. Because we are starting the count from 0, the last element will be at position 6 minus 1, which is 5. Always remember, arrays always begin from position 0. Now let's understand how bubble sort works. So this is the input value provided by the user, and this is the final output that I have to display on screen. So how does bubble sort work? Bubble sort will first compare every time it compares two numbers at a time. So when i is 0 or you call it as pass 1 or iteration 1, it will first compare 3 with 6. Is 3 less than 6? True, because we are arranging them in descending order. So is 3 less than 6? True, so you need to swap the numbers. 6 will go in place of 3. 3 will go in place of 6. So next time you have 6. 3, 1, 9, 7. Now compare the next two numbers, 3 and 1. Is 3 less than 1? False. So swapping is required, not required. Next time, 1 and 9 are compared. 1 is less than 9, true, you require swapping. Next time, 1 and 7 will be compared. So 1 is less than 7, again true, swapping will be required. So at the end you observe, at the end of first pass you will observe 1 has reached its correct position. So when we are arranging the elements in descending order, the smallest number will appear at the end. If you are arranging them in ascending order, then the largest element will appear in its correct position. So after every pass, one element is placed in its correct position. Next time, we start with the last row of previous pass, that is this row, and we start with the next iteration, i is equal to 1. Pick first two numbers, 6 and 3. 6 is less than 3, false, no need of swapping. Next time, 3 and 9 are compared, 3 is less than 9, yes, so you require swapping. Next time, 3 and 7 will be compared. 3 is less than 7, yes, again swapping is required. So at the end of pass 2, you will observe 3 has also taken its correct position. Second smallest number has reached its correct position. In the third pass, now the ones which I have shown in peach color, they, have, they are in the correct position. I have to now check for these three numbers. So first time I will compare 6 and 9, 6 is less than 9, I need to swap. Next time I will compare 6 with 7. So 6 is less than 7, true, again swap. So now 6 also has taken its correct position. In the next pass, we start off with the last row of previous pass, that is 9, 7, 6, 3, 1. 
three elements are have already taken their correct position only two elements needs to be checked so in the next pass we compare 9 and 7 9 is less than 7 false so no need of swapping finally all the numbers are stored in its correct position we'll now start with the program Include the header file followed by void main. I will declare array with maximum size. I'll ask the user enter the number of elements, how many elements he requires in the array, store it in a variable percentage d. Ampersand n and declare n here. So if the user wants five elements, n will hold the value five. Next time, I am asking the user to enter value for array. In an array, now the user will be giving five different values. So to store all the five values, I can't write scanf with five format specifiers, percentage d, percentage d, percentage d, and so on. So what I do is I'll be using for loop, starting with position zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Now I'll write scanf percentage d address of a of i. Let's understand how this works. User will give five values. For example, he will first give three, six, one, nine, seven. So when i is zero, three will get stored in a of zero. i plus plus, and when i is one, six will get stored in a of one. i plus plus, now i is three. Sorry, i is two. This will get stored in a of two. This will get stored in A of 3 and 7 will get stored in A of 4. So array is ready with values. Now let's start with the logic for bubble sort. i is equal to 0, i less than n minus 1, i plus plus. This outer for loop is for number of passes or iterations. You will require one more for loop. We'll call it as j n minus 1 minus i j plus plus. This is for number of comparisons. Please observe the opening and closing of each loop is one below the other. Now we'll start comparing if a of j is less than a of j plus 1. Since we are arranging them in descending order, we are checking is the first number less than the second number. If it is, you will have to swap the numbers. So temp is equal to a of j. A of j is equal to a of j plus 1. a of j plus 1 is equal to temp. This is the same logic for swapping of two numbers using a third variable. Let's declare all the variables here that we have used. After the logic, this is this entire thing is the logic for bubble sort this logic. So once the logic is over, you need to print the final answer on screen. So print if sorted elements are again for printing all the five values you require for loop again. 
starting from 0, i less than n, i plus plus. Here we will be writing print a statement percentage t with backslash t so that it is displayed that there is some space between the two numbers and each number will be coming from a of i. This is the closing of void main. Save the file and call it bubble.c. Compile it run it enter the number of elements i want five values what are the values three six one nine seven so these are the sorted values nine seven six three one please observe i condition is n minus one and j is n minus one minus i This is n minus 1. There are 5 elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will go on from 0, 1, 2, and 3. n minus 1. n is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. i should be less than 4. That means it will run from 0 to 3. Look at the j value. When i is 0, j will go from 0, 1, 2, 3. There are 4 comparisons. When i is 1, there are 3 comparisons. When i is 2, there will be 2. When i is 3, there will be 1. So, that condition is taken care here. When i is 0, j will run from 0 up till 5 minus 1 minus 0, which is 4 j should be less than 4. So, 0, 1, 2 and 3. That is what is shown here. 0, 1, 2 and 3. When i is 1, j values will be, when i is 1, j will run from 0 up till 5 minus 1 minus 1, which is 5 minus 2, that is 3. So, 0, 1 and 2. That is shown here. When i is 1, j will work from 0, 1 and 2. So, to reduce the number of comparisons, we are putting the variable i here so that the numbers which are already sorted, they are not being compared. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.